The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. This is an opinion-based program. A very good evening everyone, thank you very much for joining on uh, Get Real this Monday evening as well. Well, uh, today is 11th of May, Sri Lanka reopened, uh, we are getting back to work. Uh, the country is coming back uh, from uh, the COVID pandemic and trying to restart our economy, jumpstart the way we possibly can. Uh, one, there are lots of lessons that we have to learn from the pandemic and exactly understand how we are going to go forward. Uh, Tonight I've invited two guests uh, who I believe uh, would give us a good understanding with regard to the economy, how kind of what kind of business we need to engage in and how we should be engaging in them. I've invited uh, Mr. Arya Sila Vikramanayake, he's the chairman of Palavata Dairy Industries and also chairman of Mao Bimelanka Foundation uh, dedicated uh, to promoting uh, Sri, Lanka, Sri Lankan goods. Uh, welcome to the program for the first time. Thank you very much for being here, sir. Yeah. Uh, and also Mr. Lalantha Vathudura, he's the president of Sri Lanka Apparels Brands Association and also a board member of the uh, Export Development Board uh, here in Sri Lanka. Both uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. Uh, pleasure to have you on, on a day like today. Uh, apparently we are getting back to work. The country is hoping to uh, restart our economy. We know exactly um, things are going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. Uh, let me start with you, um, uh, Mr. Arya Sila. What is your forecast for the next three months, six months, how do you see Sri Lanka, uh, you know, tackling the economic perspective? I think the world is locked in today and all are isolated. We saw a few years back Britain doing this, going out and say, hey, finish, no European Union, we'll start our own economy. That's what, they're the first people who saw it to come out. This economy that you are talking about, you have it cheap in France, you bring it and consume there and do banking only in the UK, mm -hmm. doesn't go. So this is what we have been saying for the last 30 odd years. Our economy is agriculture and agriculture and agriculture. You can do other things as well. We must export tea, we must export coconut, we must export uh, fish, we must export uh, other products like say today, you can see the vegetables all over. I, I have so much of vegetables at home, I can't. Go to Monaragala, go to Norelia, everywhere, vegetables. And there's no value to it. Why are we sitting on it with the economy is vegetables and green? Why don't you fly it into uh, Middle East without selling women to Middle East? You know what I'm saying? We should do it. I'm, I'm proposing to this. I heard yesterday on news, the 100,000 are getting unemployed coming from Middle East. What do they do? They can pack vegetables for us. They can do crates and all that and then put it in, fly it out to the Middle East and earn same or more dollars for the country. So uh, vegetables can't be going on waste. It is in, in, in Gulf, you don't even see that green vegetable. Yes. So we should know what we should sell and we should uh, make it. So that now it's time for us to collect it, pack it, same day green vegetables to be flown in. Every flight that goes out from here will be taking in. This is what we see uh, those days with regard to uh, oranges and apples from Australia coming on the no, way. I mean, uh, it doesn't even grow, no. You yes. give a squirrel an apple or grapes, whether they bite it, they won't. Yes. I mean, you say it's a fruit. No, it's not a fruit for us. It's a sweet mango or a sweet uh, fruit that uh, a squirrel will eat, but uh, they won't eat that. You give an apple, they won't eat. How much are they are starved, they won't do that. It's not a fruit for us. That's the only fruit that it grows is a grape and apple. So you call that a fruit. But we have 160 or different sure. types of fruit. So I'm not running down anybody that this is agriculture economy. 
Mr. Lalanza, what is your forecast for your industry? The apparel industry has been the backbone of our economy uh, in, in the past, in the past 10, 20, 30 years. We've been actually um, gaining a lot in, in that industry. And uh, right now, I, uh, I, I think it's going to be tough for you all. Uh, um, Mahesh, uh, there are two uh, sides of the coin. Uh, two sides of the coin. Actually, uh, like uh, when you take apparel industry, uh, I think we have been uh, performing at about 5.5 billion, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's uh, as per last year. Uh, that's the apparel exports for the international brands. Right. And then there is uh, also uh, the other side of the coin, which is the domestic, the national brands, which today I'm representing Sri Lanka Apparel Brands Association, uh, which comprise of about uh, 40 odd uh, apparel brands and uh, we are also a member of uh, joint apparel association so the apparel exporters uh, overall like you know now post covid situation will totally depend on uh, the consumer behavior you know with social distancing and then you know uh, i heard like beginning may uh, in usa uh, macy's department stores uh, have already opened up about 65 uh, stores and people have started shopping so uh, we expect because the the wheel has to rotate uh, so then 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 of course you know it works you know maybe at uh, 30% 40% level to begin with and then probably we you know expect like you know get to about 75% level you know after about 3 months or so so Do we you think it's achievable uh, uh, it would be achievable because the lifestyle, especially overseas, you know, the lifestyle is such that, you know, you want to get out of the, I mean, during the weekend and then, you know, uh, go to a shopping mall, spend the day and, you know, come back. So you do your shopping. And uh, in Sri Lanka, the, the culture is a little bit different, but still, you know, uh, uh, we have been, uh, we have been uh, doing great, you know, uh, since, uh, I mean, last two years, last two, last year, of course, uh, have been pretty bad, like, you know, because of the uh, post uh, Easter attack uh, April yes. since then. But then uh, we were recovering, you know, from uh, like December last year. Now that uh, we had to go through this uh, patch, but I think it's, uh, we are only looking at positives. So I will, I will tell you about the negatives, but then lot, lot, lot of positives, you know, to look at, you know, that's how we see. Uh, like what areas do you positively see? Uh, see, uh, this is a time for Sri Lanka to rebrand our name. We've been uh, Teproban, Serendib, Pearl of the Indian Ocean. Uh, as we see our heritage, we are not utilizing you know, anything at all, you know. Yes, we need services, we need manufacturing, we need some kind of trading. And uh, then, of course, like uh, uh, Mr. Arya, uh, Sila, yeah, he, like he said, like, you know, agriculture, fisheries, you know, a lot, lot of opportunities. And then our tourism. The tourism doesn't, I mean, you have holiday makers and also the business tourists. Like, you know, as in, for example, retailers. Mm. Retailers from, let's, uh, I'll look, um, uh, I'll take an example, African region. African region is about 2 billion people. And uh, in get past, any. exactly, we don't get any of them, right? Whereas they fly over Sri Lanka to places like Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore. and they buy for their retail shops, like, you know. So, of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, are, we are pitching that, you know, we are lobbying that uh, to uh, have a wholesale market, uh, convenient wholesale market uh, in Sri Lanka, which is not available, you know, for the re regional retailers to come and purchase. You know, so what we have is PETA and PAMUNO in contrast, uh, which cater to different market needs. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if I take an example, ideal example is uh, Thailand. Thailand, if I take Platinum Mall, is a yes. classic example, right? So, so that business tourists will come here, spend a couple of nights. So that helps our tourism, the hotel industry, and as well as the uh, apparel industry. So Sri Lanka fashion has to, you know, be pitched. And then it works with our national carrier, Sri Lankan Airlines, as well. So it has like a you know a multi uh, you know. The uh, Mr. Arisil, now uh, both of y'all are uh, pitching the same idea. At the end of the day, uh, Sri Lanka has to uh, stop being a buyer and start selling uh, our, our products to the world. We've been buying every single thing uh, from outside the world. So Arisil, now there is a clear cut issue, like what what uh, uh, Mr. Lassant said. Um, everybody is not 
you know, uh, there's no, uh, everything is ad hoc. Nobody's talking to each other. The industries are not actually, you know, like if, if by any chance in fashion, uh, Sri Lankan airlines can pitch in and actually we can actually benefit from each other. Uh, what do you propose? How do you see through your organization, uh, the, the Maumim organization, how, how, what kind of a, a, a a proposal are you giving it to the government, to the country, to businesses? What is your take on that? No, what I have been saying, I mean, we've written books on this, why we should have a local agriculture economy, including tourism. What we have, just video film from AR yeah. and see what Gulf Fort is like. Can't get anything like that, world's largest fort. World's largest fort, not in anywhere else, not in Netherlands, not in New Zealand, in Indonesia, it's in Colombo, in Gaul. And do we sell it? That's we, actually the first time I'm also hearing it. Yeah, I, I, what, what, what I'm going to say is if we don't sell that, that is our problem. That is what our tourism should do. I have been saying, I have been speaking to the government as well, the tourism. If you want to do it now, say, you have a problem. So if you get quarantine tourists in a chartered flight to Sri Lanka, and they will be taken by a quarantine group of staff who will be going in through Sigiriya to a hotel, and they'll be there for X number of days with the same staff. And because they'll be $250, $300 or up, 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 up in a high range. So who are willing to pay, they must pay first and come back. They can't eat out. The hotel will give, everything will be given there. And they'll go to hotel one, A to B or C, three days there, three days there, but the same stuff. And go in a flight, in between the flight, we'll go and bring another group. And come back by the time, they will, the same group will come and So the same staff will be employed there for one month. So next set of staff will come in there, Quarantine, so so all know and they know each other, and they and and you get right money, and to go into tourism on quarantine itself, make use of it, and then currently uh, this I have told the government uh, we have they, they, this is what they have to do because you get clean people, uh, check them, uh, board from their quarantine uh, people, bring them here, the staff will be quarantined and then they work with them and then go back and get upmarket tourists. Then the money that we need, what we are looking for, the staff will be employed. And this we come, that's how we had to go on. This is what happened, uh, uh, inception of in, in uh, late seven, early 70s, when the tourism was just starting 60s, uh, when none of these five-star hotels were in existence. There were charter flights that were coming in. And they were bringing in, they, were, they knew where they were flights. going, and they, uh, charter flights. And today, I was talking to one of the hoteliers, a senior guy of our age, he said, yes, this is what we were doing uh, at that time. I'm saying, go back and do the same thing. So then you are so sure. It's not like reinventing the wheel. We already yeah. know exactly what to do. do. What to do because we have been messing around, not doing the right thing. So these are the things to upmarket tourists who will want to be going to a clean place. On your tour, you go to three Giriya, the same tourist guide will go with the group and he'll come down, another group will go, they keep the distance, you uh, do that and come back, go to a hotel and uh, the, the groups will go up and down. That's up market tourism. Now today people come here for winter to hang around without slippers, uh, torn trousers, and uh, no money being spent. But I think it is good time to change for value-added, good, popular tourists for the earning of foreign exchange for the country. So the, basically, uh, what, what I was trying to say is the whole idea of doing this: let it be tourism, let it be earning foreign exchange. End of the day, our dollar has to be four rupees. What I was, when I was going to work, it was four rupees. We bring it back to four rupees, stop eating from outside. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, I, no laughing matter. Is I, it I possible? Have, I'm saying you may want a, 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 maybe a, a kotu in the night uh, after a drink to go and in your age, I can understand. <laughs> My children do that. Yeah. But, 
you don't know what to eat you come out with the problem later with the stomach but what i'm trying to say is whatever that you eat and whatever that you do must be raw material must be from your own resources okay. only thing that i mean you go to middle east can you uh, take uh, say oil as food no so there are other things the, these agriculture products have got to be flown in there here we have it what do we have to fly uh, flow fly in we we have food fish vegetables every sugar name it every milk everything is here so we should be exporting that not importing Yes, uh, I, I want to ask a, a couple of things with regard to that. Uh, you know, do we have enough quantity? Can we produce uh, to the demands of the world? Yeah, this, this is something I mean. mean Coming to next turn, I mean, we are self-sufficient in. I'm, I'm into milk, and we can export milk and butter now, because we have a restriction from Britain when they were giving independence. They said you can't put more than 15 percent tax on milk. so that we must import from new zealand and australia and uk without their permission even today we can't put a tax that's why we are tied up here we yeah. the, 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 this is our problem i want to talk uh, more on that yeah. uh, but before that let's take a short commercial break you're watching get real uh, i'm in conversation uh, with uh, mr arsi ari selavi kumanak and also mr alas alasanta watunder how do you like RSC Lavi Kumanaika Chairman of Palavat Dairy Industries and also the Chairman of the Maubi Malanka Foundation and also uh, Mr Lalanth Vathodora uh, he is the president of Sri Lanka Apparel Brands Association and also a board member of the Export Development Board uh, gentlemen our discussion is uh, going on i mean both of you agree and uh, i i very much agree as well that Sri Lanka needs to be self sufficient and we need to be rethinking uh, our, our way of uh, working uh, we uh, mr lalanth uh, with the covid-19 crisis we've actually got a clean slate we can rethink and we restructure our economy according to the way that will benefit our people not not give uh, everything out uh, what uh, mr arya silva also was saying 15% tax on milk that's ridiculous right now uh, and those uh, has to be changed um, what do you think how how can we restructure um, apparel is something that we've been exporting and we've been getting a good market out of it so how can we if it is 5.5 billion how can we make it 7 billion 10 billion how can we go to that level and still maintain that you know uh, if i understand um, despite 5.5 billion uh, around 2 billion you spend on uh, raw material so how exactly can we actually take that also back here into the country and do that uh, yeah Uh, Mahesh, uh, now obviously uh, we've been lacking uh, textile manufacturing uh, in Sri Lanka, so that's an area uh, that we should seriously look at, and uh, especially uh, synthetic uh, woven fabrics manufacturing is uh, zero in Sri Lanka at the moment. And synthetic which fabric are, is what we uh, all wear? Uh, no, that's that's cotton, like you know, uh, more like you know, poly. Uh, we call it like uh, CVS, uh, chief value synthetic. and uh, those fabrics are utilized by uh, big uh, brands like h&m zara uh, which are all european you know uh, mm. based brands and if we have uh, synthetic fabric uh, woven fabric manufactured in sri lanka we will be eligible for gsp plus so gsp plus uh, for you to be eligible you need to purchase fabric from uh, south asian you know basically the south region and then uh, today like you know we have knit fabric manufacturing but we don't have woven and i know as a matter of fact uh, before uh, even covid like you know uh, uh, honorable uh, Uh, president uh, hg uh, gota be rajapaksa had uh, in his uh, plan like uh, have uh, uh, industrial zone uh, to build up in uh, eraur and also hambantota i believe so we sh- we need to get the korean taiwanese you know who are experts in synthetic you know to joint venture with us like foreign direct investments and once that in place we'll we'll have like we'll have the labor i think i don't think 
labor issue uh, will be uh, there anymore for the next uh, probably 10 years and we will be able to capitalize so that uh, we will bring those customers who are currently heavily exposed in uh, Bangladesh and Vietnam. You know, if you look at uh, uh, Bangladesh, uh, Vietnam, they are like $35 billion apparel exports yes. versus 5.5 Sri Lanka, right? So we've been uh, stuck right there because we don't we, have growth. What's, what's the reason we are stuck? Very reason is because uh, the fashion is speed to market. You know, when it comes to speed to market, if you don't have manufacturing, fabric manufacturing within the country, mm. uh, uh, you basically you can't sell you know it's it's a lead time fashion is basically you know it depends on how fast you can turn around you know so that's that's an area that we should uh, look at i think we would have looked at already i think we had a couple of uh, there was i think previous government uh, were talking about one million jobs and it did not work you know uh, we were talking even back then you know same thing but now we need uh, to have proper vision and if you drive that, you know, with a proper direction. Not uh, trying to be political, but do you see the current government going in that direction? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. Even before COVID-19 hit us, uh, we, that was in the plan. I know uh, in uh, President Sauba Gedakma, it's already uh, written, you know, every, we saw that. So uh, we are all allowed to like, you know, we are, we are bringing investors, so we just need to wait next uh, probably three, six months. And then this is a golden opportunity for us because now it's a level playing field. Everybody has got affected. So there are opportunities coming our way, which we need to grab. The other thing uh, I wanted to ask was, uh, you know, brands like uh, Gucci uh, or, or uh, the other, you know, famous brands. Uh, when this entire th incident happened, the COVID-19 crisis came, they switched from apparels to make it, making masks uh, and uh, looking at an opportunity how to capitalize on whatever that is means. And those masks are made uh, in this region. Why aren't we taking that uh, opportunity by ourselves? Again, again, like, you know, uh See, again, the, uh, the problem, our challenges have been like uh, the not having raw materials in the country. So the, when, you, when you import materials, let's say from China or wherever, you know, again, that need, you know, this is an opportunity that, like, you know, it doesn't last too long. Like, you know, probably next two, three months you have yeah. a demand. And then to cater to demand, there are so many, there have been so many inquiries, like for uh, medical, uh, yeah. like overalls, gowns, and, you know, not only masks, so many things. I know some of the companies have started, whoever had access to the materials. And those uh, material prices also, like, you know, went up like crazy, you know. Uh, so I think it's time to think uh, we need to have, we need to capitalize on raw materials and we need to only import the bare minimum. You know, uh, we can, whatever we can produce in Sri Lanka should be produced in Sri Lanka. And then our value addition portion will be higher. Right now in apparel sector, it's about 50%. We have to depend on fabric importation, right? So once we do that, Indeed. you know, exactly. Mr. Harisila, uh, I'm coming back to the uh, question that I asked uh, from you earlier. Do we have the capacity, the expertise in order to do all this here in Sri Lanka, not only in the in the dairy industry, but, you know, in the other industry, like even the apparel sector and all um, the tourism sector? Um, one of the, uh, when the luxury hotels, like the high-end luxury hotels were starting to come into Sri Lanka, one of the things that they were saying is that we don't even have the basic ability of, uh, you know, um, hotel uh, staff and all, they were not up to the standards of the international level. So how are we going to do that? Yes, we need to do that here in Sri Lanka. That is no doubt, there's no argument. But then we still have to cater to the world uh, in a quality that they want, in, in, in a standard that they want. How, how can we do that here? Uh, <clears throat> if you have uh, tested what we produce as dairy products, you can't, nobody can do anything better than, than anywhere in the world. Yeah, I agree. But you, I mean, you are tasted it, so <laughs> it, the butter is out of the earth. Because it's 100% dairy, mean? not palm oil, not muck in it. So we don't do that. So we got good, solid, that is what is sellable. The vegetable that I in, in, in Aurelia is, Nobody can get that kind of thing. 
it can be flown in and earned for in exchange for that. No, I, I, I would say this, this, if one wants to see it, this is fish that we catch from uh, Udawalewe tank. And we are importing 77,000 tons of canned fish into this country. When we can can it and better people eat this and consume and it's thousand times better than anything that you can buy in the market and ready to eat with curry powder in it. But the demand, the, the, no, uh, how can we? Demanding is what you want now. If you all know, my dairy products are fine demand. What is produced today, tomorrow is sold. Because we don't keep it for two years. So for what? Cow gives you milk every day. And you should consume the same day. Why do you do it for tomorrow? So we don't have to, I mean, excess, yes. We are sending it to China, or Japan, we will be sending out butter to earn foreign exchange for the country. For that, they have tied our hands and say, New Zealand Prime Minister comes running here when they put a tax on, the, because we have two rupees tax on a kilo of milk powder in this country. I mean, how can you grow industry when people are controlled with their uh, price? So we, we should control with the price by putting taxes. We can't put tax on the milk from 1948 to now. It's the same thing. Why do you think we, we've been unable to uh, you know, change the laws we, in mean, order when, to benefit when, us? When, what happens, they come running here and say our people have lose employment. So we must sell women to Middle East and buy their milk. Come on, this is not on. Uh, once again, I'm keep asking the same question. How are we going to like, yes, let's say we start giving all this, uh, you know, we start selling, but then if we can't cater to the demand, I'm not talking about the dairy no, industry, but the other industries. No, I, I'm saying, tell me what is not. When I, much before you, when I started working in 1970, the four tanks, that uh, just at Kotehena, on the other side, were oil tanks that we had coconut oil trucks, uh, dripping oil where they were used to uh, fry various things and it was smelling coconut good smell and they were used to pump in there. And they had a pipeline to a jetty and take it to India. And they were used to see, uh, uh, for soap making, we were also uh, had a pipeline to make soap. And we were doing it 100% local with our own coconut and was exporting. And when some people came and cut the coconut trees and same tanks are now bringing in palm oil from Malaysia and pumping it through the same tr truck. Whose fault is our fault? So don't say that we can't or have. You all are young, you all don't. Need. We are old enough, I'm saying uh, we've seen this. We seen these dollars being coming into this country. I mean, uh, before you all didn't see the um, uh, ferry that were going to India. You can buy a railway ticket in Colombo to go travel to India and get into ferry and get into a train. Uh, same uh, Colombo Fort Railway Station. You can buy a ticket to to a trip to India, uh, go for uh, uh, any uh, function or anything else, or for worshiping uh, uh, their own gods come back when they say you take cloves and coconut oil, one gallon of coconut oil and a kilo or a pound of uh, cloves is enough for the total expenditure. That's why how valuable it was. So we, we had clove here, we had coconut oil here, everything was there. And now we say no because you all are now eating uh, kothuroti and then eating uh, 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 imported wheat. It doesn't even grow. Our own, I mean, Buddhism says, Buddha, Lord Buddha says, that a gr grain that doesn't grow in your country doesn't digest with you. That's why our children have diabetes because of eating wheat. So uh, I, I'm not laughing at anybody. This is the truth. God has said that. The Lord Buddha has said that. So we, we are sick and most of the year we need more drugs and these to take uh, the sick. Uh, to uh, keep people away from uh, these diseases. These are being, we have bought them. So that is why I'm saying we can have fish canning, vegetables. That is our agriculture. We should be exporting fish. We should be, uh, first save that 77,000 tons of 
canned fish coming in, then export. Uh, like butter, we will be we are now exporting as well, and uh, tomorrow day after we should be exporting milk powder as well, and consume liquid milk like all the other countries. We liquid uh, milk is good enough. We don't have to import powder and put water and drink it here as liquid. Nobody eat powder and have tea, you know. So, I mean, how foolish, you know, I mean, you must be insane to do something like that. We, I mean, I will be doing, there's 87% of water in milk. So, you have to evaporate it to carry powder to for cheap transportation. You take it back to your own country, then you put water and make your liquid, then you're adding water at that country. That is what we have been doing. When we were going to school, we had this powder and added, and this is what happened. And they got us hooked onto it. At that time, we had enough cows in the country. Even now, there are enough cows to get the self-sufficiency in milk. But India did this a few years back. With Gandhi's time, they put stop to it and put tax on it. And as uh, soon as you put, they paid tax and uh, imported it, then they put an anti-dumping tax, and now it's no anybody can go and make milk with their cows in India, but nobody can make it. So that is how we should change this economy. Get your raw material, as he said just now. Raw material must come from here, and do any value added. Like say cinnamon, we are the last ninety-five percent of the world's you know, is coming from here. But Dubai, they add value. And what are we doing? That, that, that is, uh, tires, I, I mean, I was a kid. I saw tire factory calendar being done as a schoolboy. And I saw car tires uh, being produced in Kalani tire factory. And today, we are importing all our cars. We have eight, six, 20, 100,000 at least a tire. If it's a lorry tire or something bigger, it's much more. So we are, we are spending money and we must produce our tires in this country because we were used to, we had a contract with China, rubber rice pact. We were used to export rubber and bring rice from them. So we, have, we, have, we, have, we can do it, believe in it. You're, we have to give this uh, baton to you all. You all are young, you all should do it. We may not live long, but you all have to take this economy right to the country. It's very interesting to uh, listen about the uh, good old days. Uh, I want to talk about uh, um, with both the gentlemen as to where we went from and how exactly can we, we can make a comeback out, out from it. Let's take a short commission break. You're watching Get Real with you. Uh, with Mr. Arya Sinan Kronaika, Chairman of Palawatha Dairy Industries, and also Mr. Lalantha Patudar, President of Sri Lanka Apparel Brands Association, and also the board member of Export Development Board, Mr. Uh, Lalantha. Um, I mean, listening to what we've been doing uh, in the 70s, 80s, and all, um, you know, somewhere something went wrong. And here we are sitting in the 20, uh, 2020s, exporting, uh, importing everything and exporting close to nothing. So yes, we the, the idea is that we need to be self-sufficient, plus we need to send the surplus out and actually make a, a living out of that. Uh, one uh, thing I want to discuss with you is, uh, I don't know whether in, in 2000, well, you remember this song called Made in India, which kind of uh, went throughout here in Sri Lanka as well. Now I think time has has really come for us to rethink about made in Sri Lanka. Absolutely. And actually give that that value to it because uh, I've still, uh, like when you go to Australia, some, some of my relations gives me uh, shirts. Uh, when you look the <laughs> it's made in Sri Lanka. So uh, they, ha they think that it's valuable here, but how can we change the mindset of our people and, you know, actually make uh, a, a living out of this and say, you know, we don't have, uh, uh, you know, low quality stuff. We have mm. high quality stuff. W what is your thinking on that? Um, well, I think, uh, uh, you know, Made in Sri Lanka uh, has had its uh, high level of credibility. It's just that us who have not looked at a sustainable uh, uh, 
path of you know uh, preserving uh, made in sri lanka be apparel be fashion be anything but uh, talking about fashion and apparel industry footwear including footwear and accessories i would still take uh, for for a little while i'll take uh, thailand as an example still uh, if you look at thailand economy uh, i i uh, studied about it uh, but, uh, their export is about 225 billion dollars gdp basically uh, exports um, and uh, i think thailand is about 70 million people so in proportion if you take sri lanka right we are 22 million our exports is about 18 billion we should be about 50 60 billion level as a combination so obviously we need to drive how do we get there we can only get there by utilizing our talents our caliber and obviously our expertise and then having access to raw materials as much as possible very simple we have design talents several design schools are available in sri lanka right uh, in the region itself right you know we are not exposed like if you take uh, between sri lanka and india uh, foreign exchange benefits how much are we taking advantage of right so indian retailers should be shopping here right <laughs> we to for there right we don't we are not there right we are not there so uh, i'm coming to a point like you know even if you take uh, uh, like you know when you take thailand business uh, if you take patuna market bangkok uh, tourists go there right you go there uh, you uh, sightsee and everything and then obviously uh, in your agenda shopping in bangkok is kind of a must yes and then if you look at the domestic market they even outsource to places like vietnam to manufacture for them for that that operation mm-hmm. right so thailand itself is not self sufficient to cater to that demand i'm talking about to exactly right and by land uh, from vietnam uh, they get goods into thailand now coming to sri lanka Our SME is very weak. SME in any economy model should be the backbone. You can have big towers, uh, you know all that, but then SME has to be looked after, protected. So how we do that is uh, networking. You know, I mean Sri Lanka is a beautiful place. Yes. People would, anybody would love to come to Sri Lanka, right? There is no war, right? Be a beautiful weather. right tropical place tropical country right and uh, uh, we are not expensive we are not expensive comparatively like if you compare like place like mauritius the other side of the indian ocean right uh, how they sell their tourism right and their gdp is uh, only about 28 uh, billion dollars and i saw like as a matter of fact their stimulus for covid is about 4.5 billion dollars right so now right now i think the short term uh, survival would be for i don't know how it can happen uh, i mean as a country we we have debts i think about 14000 billion dollars yeah. and if you can figure out a way to inject uh, uh, fuel basically inject uh, funding into the system banking system and uh, to the industry list for the next 3 to 5 years at a uh, uh, concession like you know lower interest rates uh, cheap loans you call it what are, what is the reception with regard to like you, when you're making locally let's take the apparel industry certain brands that you already have uh, you know you're selling it local brands not not working for the international yeah. what is the reception how how do those things have been perceived Uh, pretty well i mean if you i mean there are uh, i can't name but uh, there are several who have uh, some uh, distributed among the the department stores uh, within the retail chains available and uh, some have stand alone uh, stores and uh, it's it's uh, a n- it's 2.5 billion dollar business the, the national brands i wouldn't call it local uh, national brands uh, put together and out of that 40% is from uh, sri lanka apparel brands association and the balance is imported now this is where we got to control you know import tariff need to come into place or uh, prohibition But right 
uh, with regard to the ready-made garments. I'm not referring to the international franchise, international brands. Uh, obviously, the customer should have competitive advantage and then access to international brands as well. I'm not referring to those, but cheap, private label, unknown stuff that comes from typically Thailand, India, you know, etc. You know, that got to be stopped, ready-made. Mr. Arisila, um, it's it's understood that yes, we I mean, if we have something to sell, we need the support of the world. Uh, how we can't just stop everything and uh, stop our relations with uh, every every country in the world and say uh, you know we're going to be self-sufficient? That's not going to work. You understand that. So how are we going to find the balance? Uh, you know, we need China, we need India, we need the uh, United States, we need Europe. Uh, so how can we? tell them, look, we want to be self-sufficient, we want to have a, a, a national, uh, you know, more nationalistic approach in our economy, and yet we want to have good relations with uh, your country. So how are we going to give them take? Obviously, you know, say take uh, uh, wrapping or containers has to come from China, it's cheaper and it's getting done. We can buy them, but we can't buy raw material which we have here. Like say, if I I would like to make tin in milk powder, like we had in our, yes, yes. when we were children, on a tin. So if we had to import the tin and put it in there, and it, I mean, so you can recycle it and do it back. So we need them. And we, I say, if I'm making excess butter, China, I mean, Japan won't do that. So I, they need, they're importing. So I should have, we can't buy their motor bicycles and cars and just let them do whatever that they want. No, they have to have uh, that quota of what they need to buy from us, should be butter. They can buy it because we have world class food grade uh, certified. So that should be, so, so is milk powder. China has to buy our milk powder because they are total importer of milk powder. So this, and we are saying it's 100% cow milk. It's nothing, no palm oil, nothing. Then we have the uh, quality uh, recognition on it. So we can sell it, and we have already spoken to on that. So the the quality, we, we need their machinery. Uh, like say, uh, my some of my dairy material uh, machinery first came from Europe, then I came from India. Sometimes it becomes cheaper from uh, China, because, and their workmanship is quite good. So we have, we have, I have three different large machines and I'm making it. Uh, so in different times, I've got it uh, different uh, uh, part. So we have to buy certain things from the machinery mainly. And we have the raw material, we'll put the machinery and uh, do that. And sell our product with the brand name on it. So the, 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 and that's why I said cinnamon should not be, not be exported just as the peel. It should be value added, done here, not in Dubai. It must be done here. Get them to come and do it here. Rubber is here. Get the tires done in this country as it was done then. And get the, get the tires so that how many million tires we change every year. I mean, where have we been? What have we been doing for the, with our economy? We have been giving everything up to 202 rupees a dollar from 4 rupees at my time. I mean, I'm not 200 years old. I'm, uh, I mean, uh, so in our time, it just go, went up. And I want that to come down just like that in the same way. Because we only had to put it right by doing it. I mean, today it's 180 or 180, 170. So it will go down, slip the way, soon as we stop consuming foreign food. Mainly, $1,800 million. We are importing chilies, onions, what we have here. Milk and everything. Stop that. But it's thousand eight hundred million dollars, one refinery. It will take three years to build a refinery. So you have one thousand eight hundred into three by that time, saved in the country. So we just keep on doing that. Uh, then if you now if you, I, I've been into sugar bee industry, if the sugar is can be produced here, we have enough land. I think we've started. If you produce sugar. sugar here, then you have five hundred million dollars saved in this country. So is milk and uh, everything. I'm, I'm saying these, we have to do it. Whether we like it or not, it's our seniors, our uh, duty, and we have to do this. Indeed, um, the, I mean, there's no 
argument there uh, with regard to we have to be self-sufficient. I think COVID-19 exactly proved that, that uh, we have to look inside rather than always depending on outside because uh, no sooner a crisis come, uh, like this comes uh, once again, then we cannot be, you know, depending on each and every other country and then, you know, fall into trouble and our people are the ones who are suffering. I hope that the political leadership would be actually thinking on those lines, uh, what these two gentlemen have been uh, professing uh, tonight here. We're really out of time. I want to thank uh, Mr. Arya Silva Kribanayaka, the chairman of Palavatha Industries. Uh, he's also the chairman of Mobi Milanka Foundation, uh, who's dedicated to promoting Sri Lankan goods. And also Mr. Lalantha Watudura, the president of uh, Sri Lanka Apparel Brands Association and also a member of the Export Development Board. Uh, gentlemen, the conversation has to go beyond this more than one hour. Uh, I mean, I understand. I, I'm very much in, in line with what you all what are thinking. Hope we can uh, get it done. Please come back again and uh, have a discussion with us once again. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I'll be back again at around 9.35 with more news. I'll see you then. Bye for now.